The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, get ready for an extended edition of Your Questions and Honest Answers. Pat weighs in on the issues that matter to you. How can I stop a demonic attack? Can the government force us to take a vaccine? Is suicide the unpardonable sin? From the spiritual, to the social, to the political, no topic is off limits. Stay tuned for a show dedicated to answering your voicemails on today's 700 Club. Welcome, folks. We're going to have some fun today. We've got your questions coming on tape. Uh, they've, they've been pre-recorded, and we'll be playing them during this show, and I think you'll find it fun. But first of all, the Equality Act, that would be Joe Biden's top priority as president, and it's grabbing center stage this week as part of the Democratic Party's platform. Now, why is this a huge threat to people of faith? And how could it undermine the safety of our school children? It's very alarming. Here, Heather Sells had more. Joe Biden has a deep Catholic faith and history that he regularly touts to potential voters. But if elected, his administration could easily silence and marginalize people of faith. Why? Because the LGBTQ lobby dominates the Democratic Party. Its former top lobbyist is the convention's CEO, and its number one priority, the Equality Act, would oppress believers. Just last year, he made clear that the Equality Act would be his top priority as president. I promise you, if I'm elected president, that'll be the first thing I ask to be done. And so did Tuesday's LGBTQ Democratic Caucus. We have to pass the Equality Act through both houses, and of course, we have to have a president who will sign it into law. The Equality Act would add sexual orientation and gender identity to federal civil rights laws, with no exceptions for people of faith. It treats the people who believe that marriage is between a man and a woman or that we're created male and female. Um, it treats our beliefs as race, as the equivalent of racist bigotry. Other elements of the bill include forcing female athletes to compete with men that identify as women, requiring faith-based adoption agencies to choose between placing children with gay couples or closing down. It also adds the words perception and belief to the 1964 Civil Rights Act, which Senator James Lankford says could spell even more trouble. If I go to interview in a job and I'm not hired, I can sue that employer because I perceive they were thinking I was gay and so they didn't hire me. Analysts like the Family Research Council's David Clausen say Biden's LGBTQ-friendly policies would affect school children and their safety in bathrooms. Biden has said that within his first, uh, on his first day in office, he would reinstate Obama-era guidance uh, for schools uh, that would allow those who identify as transgender to have access to the locker rooms, bathrooms, and changing facilities uh, of their choice. Biden calls transgender equality the civil rights issue of our time, his foundation launched a family acceptance campaign in 2018. We'll use our resources to highlight the harms of family rejection. But with new reporting on concerns about social contagion and evidence that some kids might adopt transgender identities to fit in, Biden's push to force family acceptance could strip parents of their ability to care for their children and protect them from harmful medical treatments. Heather Sells, CBN News. Well, that's not a shocker. You look at uh, Kamala Harris, and everybody's presenting her as a tremendous moderate. You know, Mao Zedong was a agrarian reformer, too. Well, in other news, it's official. Joe Biden received the Democratic nomination for president last night's convention. But who gave a surprising endorsement? John Jessup has more. Thanks, Pat. The nomination was delivered in a manner unlike any ever seen before, lacking the in-person excitement of conventions past. I'm pleased to announce 
that Vice President Joe Biden has officially been nominated by the Democratic Party as our candidate for President of the United States. Well, thank you very, very much. The second night of the Democratic National Convention included a message from General Colin Powell, the former Republican Secretary of State who served under President George W. Bush, said Biden will be a president who, quote, we will all be proud to salute. The night was topped off with words from Biden's wife, Jill, who gave a glimpse into his character. The burdens we carry are heavy, and we need someone with strong shoulders. I know that if we entrust this nation to Joe, he will do for your family what he did for ours. Bring us together and make us whole. Tonight's speakers include 2016 Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton and Biden's vice presidential running mate, Senator Kamala Harris. Well, things will stay as is at the U.S. Postal Service, at least through the election. The Postmaster General is delaying new operational changes and cost-cutting measures after some Democrats claim they could negatively impact mail-in voting practices in November. In a statement Tuesday, Postmaster General Louis DeJoy said he believes changes are necessary for the long-term sustainability of the Postal Service and that, quote, work towards those reforms will commence after the election. Well, officials in Portland declared a riot Tuesday night after agitators threw burning material into the Multnomah Sheriff's Office. Meanwhile, police have identified a suspect in the brutal beating of a man who crashed his truck near a Black Lives Matter demonstration Sunday. The driver, Adam Hayner, was pulled from his truck, punched, and pushed to the ground. At one point, a man wearing a shirt labeled security kicked him in the head, leaving Hayner injured and motionless. He was later taken to the hospital, treated, and released. Police are seeking 25-year-old Marquise Love in the accident. Senator Lindsey Graham is calling on the Justice Department to take action, saying, quote, they taunted and tortured this individual before severely injuring him. The group responsible are great candidates for federal prosecution of the constitutional rights of a victim. Well, turning now to the battle to contain COVID-19, officials now say a widely used test may give inaccurate results if not used correctly. That comes as schools and universities struggle with reopening. Charlene Aaron has a story. In a stunning announcement Tuesday, the FDA revealed that a popular COVID-19 test could be giving invalid or false negative results. Officials say the tests produced by Thermo Fisher Scientific are vulnerable to false negatives if the samples aren't properly processed. This as the World Health Organization warned that young people are becoming the main spreaders of the virus. The trouble is there are areas of the country, several, that are actually in community spread. Colleges and universities grapple with reopening their campuses as outbreaks occur. Parties like this one at the University of North Georgia last weekend are part of the problem. We can't have these large parties because of the level of asymptomatic spread. With at least 89 coronavirus cases on the campus of Notre Dame, the president is moving undergraduate classes online and canceling most in-classroom instruction. If these steps are not successful, we will have to send students home as we did last spring. Officials at UNC Chapel Hill have already canceled most in-person instruction, and students are being encouraged to leave campus. I think we're going to wait it out, and once they kick us out, we'll go home. Yeah, I think that's our plan for now. Students on the campus of the University of Colorado Boulder are concerned after six cases of the virus were detected. The infected students are now in quarantine, but the school still plans to hold in-person classes as testing continues. We're going to be setting up a program for testing of individuals randomly to try and find cases before there is an outbreak. Meanwhile, Thermo Fisher says faulty test results are rare and most users get accurate results by following company directions. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Thanks, Charlene. TikTok, a Chinese-owned company, is one of the world's most popular apps. It's also been described as a threat to national security. Dale Hurd explains why President Trump is still mulling his threat to ban it. After only two years as a worldwide app, TikTok has become a major part of Internet culture and social media. It is an extremely addictive platform. It's an app that allows users to create and share 15-second videos on any topic. 
with over 2 billion all-time downloads, it's the most downloaded app in the world. TikTok was downloaded 315 million times during the first three months of this year. That's more downloads in one quarter than any other app in history. It looks innocent enough, but looks can be deceiving. And President Trump has extended a deadline until November 12th for TikTok's U.S. operation to be sold to a U.S. company or be banned. At which point it's going to be out of business in the United States. But if somebody, and whether it's uh, Microsoft or somebody else buys it, that'll be interesting. TikTok presents several risks. It's owned by ByteDance a Chinese company so closely tied to the Chinese government that it created a company committee of Communist Party members. Software experts say TikTok steals more data than any other social media app and is specifically designed to hide just how much data it's stealing. Ashkan Kazarian, director of civil liberties at Tech Freedom, says TikTok has consistently concealed its connections to the Chinese Communist government. They refuse to testify in Senate, saying that their executives are based in Beijing. At the same time, they said they're not a Chinese company. Then their lawyers told New York Times that they're not a Chinese company because they're incorporated in the Cayman Islands. Things like that kept happening over and over again. A big concern is that more than a third of TikTok's 50 million daily users are 14 years of old or younger. And Lena Nealon of the National Center on Sexual Exploitation says experts have branded TikTok a hunting ground for pedophiles. And that was due to insufficient controls that allowed strangers to view minors' videos comment on videos and directly message them. Nathaniel Bradley, CEO and founder of Data Donate Technologies, says the best thing parents can do for their kids' safety is remove TikTok from their phones. These applications have become a Trojan horse. It is just uh, a situation where, as, as a parent, I would recommend uh, deleting it. Experts say TikTok was designed primarily as a data-stealing app, meant to look like a social media app. And it's given the Chinese Communist Party access to the personal data of millions of Americans. Microsoft and Oracle have been mentioned as wanting to buy TikTok, which is valued globally at $50 billion. Dale Hurd, CBN News. And Microsoft had been in talks with TikTok for weeks, but Oracle's recent interests could hijack the deal. And Pat, President Trump said Oracle would be a great company to take over TikTok's U.S. operations. Well, it's a big deal, but I tell you, the Chinese are so uh, adroit in mining uh, uh, American interests. You know, if a company wants to do business in China, they have to guarantee they'll give them access to their proprietary information. And the Chinese are building up a tremendous arsenal of weapons and, and uh, cyber uh, security uh, applications. I mean, it's a dangerous thing. Well, anyhow, so much for the news. Now let's get into something fun. You're not on TikTok, are you? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not a kid. And I don't know anything <laughs> about not, TikTok. I'm not either. Okay. Don't plan on it. Well, uh, up yeah. next, you called, and Pat's about to answer your voicemail questions. A special edition of Your Questions, Honest Answers is coming up. All right, we've got some very interesting calls and questions coming in for Pat in our special edition of Your Questions, Honest Answers. Our first caller is Dory from Atlanta. Go ahead. I'm calling because my 23-year-old son is involved with a 37-year-old woman with four kids with three different fathers. She proposed to him, and now they're planning on getting married in November. I'm very conflicted. I don't think it's a good match for him but I don't want to alienate him. Should we support him? What should we do? I think you'd better warn him as quick as you can. Uh, that is uh, a, a match that's made from the pit of hell. And uh, that poor man is being seduced. You know, if you saw uh, an animal dragging your child off into a cave, uh, you, you would uh, hit the animal in the head. if. if if it alienated your child, tough luck. But I mean, by all means, stand up against that because he's going to be destroyed. That is 
uh, an unbelievable situation, and you wonder where that woman is coming from and what she wants to do. Uh, she, she's like a predator, and mm -hmm. you, you absolutely stand up against it. And if you alienate him, tough luck. Well, right. you nailed that, Pat. Yeah. Man, that was good. <laughs> good advice. I hope she takes it. Right. Well, here's Mark from Anderson, South Carolina. Hey, Pat. I'm noticing it's getting to be harder and harder to get coin change at the register. Can you tell me what's up with it? Thank you. Uh, you, you get coins at the register? I, I think we're getting to a position where uh, the, the Mint doesn't want to produce coins. And uh, I, I think at the same time, uh, we, we, they don't even want folding money. I was in one store the other day that sold produce. And they said, we won't take cash, we'll only take credit cards. Really? Well, they didn't want to handle the money because of the uh, COVID. Uh, yeah, I, I have noticed the coin thing, though, at a couple of different places saying, you know, we were very limited on our coins. And I... Interesting. Well, I, I, I think it, it costs more money for the government to to mint these things than, than they were worth. And, mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, the, they probably are limited. I, I don't know. I don't have any information personally, but that's what I would think. All right. All right. Well, here's another question. Uh, Lisa is calling from Anchorage, Alaska. My question to you is, my significant other and I have addiction issues. What verse or verses should I look up when I feel like I'm in a spiritual warfare, like under a Satan attack or something? I am trying to quit. Um, significant other, that means you're not married, but you're in a relationship right. that probably is uh, uh, classified under the biblical term of fornication. And so uh, you, you're uh, the addiction is just one more uh, sign along the way. Um, you know, the Bible indicates that there's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But will the temptation make a way of escape if you want to escape it? Um, we are free. God created us to have dominion. You go back to the book of Genesis and it says, God has given man dominion. And he's given him dominion over the fish and over the fowls and over the plants and over everything in this earth. But the addiction comes about being addicted to, you, you're submitting yourself to a plant. You know, alcohol, cocaine, marijuana, these are all vegetables. And you're made in the image of God. I recommend reading the book of Genesis and seeing the fact you have dominion. And what you need to do, you and your, quote, significant other, need to, to uh, take that seriously and realize you're a child of God and act like one. All right. Tough love. All right. Here's another question from Carrie, and uh, he or she is from Campbellsburg, Kentucky. I'm 68, and I would like to know if they could force the vaccine on me. I, so many, I'm not hearing these things. Uh, she wants to know if, if she's 68 years old and she wants to know if they could force the COVID-19 vaccine on her. And a lot of people have that uh, question right now. Well, uh, yes, they probably could. Uh, but uh, it's unlikely right now. They don't have enough vaccines to go around and they're not sure. The, the problem is that it's an uncertain thing whether those vaccines will work. And secondly, uh, they, they are not sure how long they'll last. And uh, we've gotten a, a lot of false negatives now. We just had part of the story today. The testing labs are wrong. So I think the idea of somebody forcing you to take a vaccine right now is, is uh, highly unlikely. All right. Yeah, let's hope so. All right. Here's another question from Mike. He's from Unionville, New Jersey. I wanted to ask you, as anti-Semitism is rising in the world and the Jewish people are getting attacked from both sides of the political spectrum, what can a Christian do to try and stop this horrible outrage? I think the biggest thing we need to do is to stand with Israel and to stand with the Jewish people. I made a commitment for CBN a long, long time ago. But you remember Benjamin Disraeli was asked by Queen Victoria, Mr. Prime Minister, what evidence do you have for the existence of God? And Disraeli said, the Jew, your majesty. And I believe the Jew is, is the evidence that God has a plan. And to them were entrusted the oracles of God. The Old and New Testament came to us, except for one author, Luke. Uh, they're all Jewish people who wrote the, the Old and New Testament. And the faith we have as Christians 
comes out of the uh, out of the Jews. And I think we need to celebrate that, and we need to stand with Israel. But yes, God um, wants to defend His people, but at the same time, the devil wants to eliminate the evidence of God. And through the Jews, we have the precious faith in Jesus Christ. Let's face it, was was Jewish. He was a Jewish rabbi, if you want to, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. He was a Jewish carpenter <laughs> yeah. and a rabbi. All right. But I think, you know, he was asking, how can he stand? Obviously, we stand with him, but I pray, prayer, right? Just well, we can pray, but I think more than anything, we, are, we let our voices be heard. If there is a, an incidence of anti-Semitism, we need to stand against it. But it is amazing to me the limit, uh, the the extent of, mm. of anti-Semitism in, in countries like you, Romania and, and Hungary, where there are only you know a few thousand Jews in the whole country, and yet there's virulent anti-Semitism that's carried over from the Nazis. Okay, so What's demonic. Now? All right. Well, this next question comes from our own backyard of Norfolk, Virginia. Here's Carol. I've been reading your book. I have walked with the living God, and I absolutely love it. Recently, you interviewed a doctor, and he talked about a book that you had written that he had recently read that I thought that you had recently written on the Holy Spirit. Could you please give us the name of that book? I would love to get that book as well. Thank you, and God bless. As you like the other one, and the book is uh, uh, the, the, on the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, the the. Uh, I've gotten a book on the Holy Spirit. It, it is in manuscript form. It has not been published yet, but uh, I look forward to bringing it out when the time comes. But I've, I'm talking to the publisher about it. They're very interested, in, but we've got one book in the, in the marketplace, and they didn't want to put another one out there. But I, I, the Lord showed me something about the Holy Spirit that I think is very, very interesting, and I, I think you'll enjoy it. But it's, it's I, I told uh, our guy at the university, I'll either be uh, hailed as a as a breakthrough theologian, or I'll be condemned as a heretic. I don't know which is going No, to I've read a few chapters of yeah, it. You, you gave me a sneak peek, and it's really good. No, yeah. it, it, it'll be well received. Well, I'm I sure. hope so. Well, anyhow, <laughs> the, 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 I walk with the living God is the one that's out there right now. All right. All right. Well, here's a caller um, all the way from North Hollywood, California. Go ahead. Hi, Pat. I've always wondered, why did Rachel steal her father's idols? I don't understand why she would steal from her father. Well, you know, she was uh, uh, being, uh, she was leaving her father's house. And, and uh, uh, as I recall the story, I want to go into detail, but uh, uh, she, she was, uh, they were pursuing her. And, you know, uh, her, uh, well, uh, she, she uh, it was time to leave. And uh, why did she carry the family gods along with her? I don't know. But Maybe protection she, or something? She, she claimed to, to be having her period, and she couldn't get up to greet her father. And so she had these idols in how do I know what's wrong with her? I mean, she, you know, <laughs> the, 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 that was that was part of of the culture that they lived in. All right. A woman during that time of the month, you, you, it's hard to explain. They can't explain. We, we don't know. We don't well, know. But she was trying to hide from from her father. To, 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 she was running away. All right. Well, here's Josephine from Tom's River, New Jersey. I have a question. What does it mean? What you loose on earth, you loose in heaven. What are we supposed to loose on earth? Um, the, the, the loosing and, bin, and binding was what the uh, rabbis did when they bound certain restrictions on people. And they would loose restrictions. In other words, you could uh, eat, you know, unleavened bread, or you couldn't eat unleavened bread. And this was the binding and loosing. And so Jesus gave the authority to his people that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So God says heaven is going to go along with the church, but it's got to be in council. And I think a lot of, uh, we, we haven't had really church councils in a long time where the whole uh, Christian denomination comes together and says, these are our rules. But you remember, Paul appeared before the, the elders and he, they said, well, now here's what we're going to do. Uh, you tell the Gentiles to abstain from fornication and from uh, taking of blood 
and everything else is okay. So that was binding and loosing. That's what they were doing, okay? All right, great first uh, segment. All right. And uh, love Pat's answers. Well, coming up, we've got round two of your special voicemail edition of your questions and honest answers. So don't go away. We will be right back. Welcome back to Washington for this CBN News Break. Evangelist Franklin Graham and other conservatives are calling on parents to boycott Disney's LGBTQ agenda. He says Disney has the right to make their cartoons, but Christians also have the right to not support them. The latest LGBTQ character is in the lead role of a show on the Disney Channel. The Owl House is about a bisexual teenager exploring her sexuality and dabbling in witchcraft. 14-year-old character has shown affection for male characters in previous episodes, but begins to explore the idea of a relationship with a female. Well, an Oklahoma boy who pleaded for a family received 5,000 adoption inquiries within 12 hours of his interview with a local TV station. Nine-year-old Jordan currently lives in a group home and has been under state care for six years. A local news outlet asked Jordan about three wishes he wanted granted. He simply replied, a family. Since then, thousands of people have reached out hoping to grant Gort Jordan his wish. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Wendy will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. And I want to thank you, CBN Partners. You are making a difference around the world and right here at home with um, with your love and with your money and your prayers. So if you would like to help so many hurting people right now, please go to your phones. The number is toll free. It's on your screen, 1-800-700-7000, or you can log on to CBN.com and make your gift that way. You know, a lot of us aren't going to church right now, and we're looking for a place to tithe. CBN is great ground. If you're thinking, you know, I still want to tithe, CBN is the place to do it because we are making a difference. So please go to your phones right now. Well, it is time for round two of your questions and Pat's answers. And we have a question from Pam and she's from Newton, North Carolina. Go ahead. I've always been told that if you commit suicide, you'll never get into heaven because it's the unforgivable sin. Is this true? Uh, you know, that's a very good question. Um, I just believe that the sin is very, how, how can you repent of it once you've done it? You know, you have to repent when you do something and to take your own life. But of course, again, at law, it is presumed that a person who commits suicide is crazy. Right. And so if a crazy person does some foolish thing, it's not held against them because they don't understand the law and don't know what they're doing. But um, very frankly, eternity is horrible. Hell is beyond belief. And there's no way you can get free from the problems of this life by killing yourself. Mm -hmm. And if to launch yourself into an eternity of darkness away from God is just too frightening to contemplate. So uh, suicide is not the answer, but is it the unpardonable sin? Well, this is for God to decide, but it's one sin that I, I figure once you've killed yourself, it's very hard to repent that you've done it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Well, here's another question from Clara. She's from Everett, Massachusetts. I just want to say I've been watching the 700 Club for two weeks now and enjoy it very much. Anyways, I want to ask Pat a question. My mother never treated me right. All my life, she was very mean to me and very abusive to me for no reason. Is it a sin that I stopped talking to her because whatever I did wasn't good enough for her? You know, the Bible says that we're to honor our mother and our father. And that's the only command with promise because it says that your days may be long in the land that the Lord that your God has given you. So honoring your mother and father. Uh, it doesn't say anything about them being mean or not mean. It's just terrible to have a, a, a parent who does this. Mm. But I would say this, whatever you do, don't get in an argument with your mother because they can be so unreasonable. They can hurt you very badly. And um, I, I just think you ought to honor the fact that this is the only mother you've got. 
and your mother and father were the ones that God gave you to. And so they brought you into the world and respect them for that. But the, the, the Greek in that is tomeo, give them weight. Give them weight for who they are. But you don't necessarily have to argue with them, nor do you have to stay in the presence of being to be abused. You, you, there's nothing the Bible says you've got to do that. All right. All right. Good advice, Pat. Our next caller is Bruce from Providence, Rhode Island. My question for Pat is, since Jesus said that his kingdom was no part of the world and his disciples and apostles did not run for office, how do you justify your political involvement? Well, uh, I'm not Jesus, <laughs> for <laughs> starters. Uh, you know, I, I don't see anything in the Bible that says uh, that Christians shouldn't be involved. You know, he said, render to Caesar what's Caesar's and to God what's God. Well, who is Caesar? We are Caesar's. We are the government. And we owe the government informed citizenship. We owe the, the vote. We owe uh, and service as, as a member of, of the legislative body or uh, is, a, is a calling from God. So I, I don't, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world, to be sure. He said, if it was, my, my disciples would fight for me. But this is the kingdom of God. And this is, we live in the United States of America. This isn't the kingdom of God. And as citizens of this land, we owe it to Caesar. Render to Caesar what belongs to him. And what he belongs is, is intelligent service, including sometimes offering ourselves for public office. Okay? We need more Christians in public office, well, not less. Absolutely. <laughs> if you don't have any in there, then what do you got in, in this place? You've got people who are not Christian. That's the, that's the corollary of that. Right? Oh, yeah. And the Bible says when the righteous are in power. The, the, the people rejoice. That's Amen. exactly it. And when, when the wicked are in peril, the people groan. All right. There you go. All, All right. right. Well, next on the line is Shaniqua from St. Petersburg, Florida. I have a question. I am a tither, and I watch the 700 Club, and I see where these tithers are getting out of debt. But I am $11,000 in credit card debt, and I have to live off of my credit cards because I give my tithes and I fall short. So my question is, what am I doing wrong? Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I really can't answer what you're doing wrong. All I can say is that God does promise that if you are faithful in giving, He said, prove me with your tithes and offers. If I won't open the windows of heaven and pour you out such a blessing, you can't contain it. So I think when the money leaves your hand and gets into God's hands, it can be multiplied many times over. Uh, beyond that, look at your own heart. I mean. Is there something in your life that's blocking the blessing? If you have resentment in your heart towards somebody else, you will not have an answer to prayer. So is there somebody you're mad with, somebody who hurts you, somebody that you're resentful against? All those things are, will block the flow of God into your life financially. All right? All right. Here's Carol from Houston, Texas. My husband and I have recently changed churches. He chose the first church that we visited. This pastor preaches against the gifts of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. I was raised in a charismatic church myself and totally believe that it is true. I found a church myself that is spirit-filled and I attend there. Am I wrong to not go with my husband to the church that he chose? Uh, you know, I don't want to advocate breaking families and wives being uh, disloyal to their husbands. But you, uh, <laughs> I think it was Dale Moody said, you don't set live chicks under a dead hen. <laughs> 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 and I, th I think to go to some place that denies the power of God, you're cutting yourself off from the source of, of what God's doing. I believe in the power of God. And it's the power of God that, that brings forth fruit. It's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And if, if somebody denies the gifts of the Spirit, then it's deadening. Um, would you be sinning necessarily if you went to one church and your husband went to another? You can do that. I mean, work with him and say, look, dear, uh, here's, the, here's what I feel. And I have been filled with the Spirit. And I'm enjoying the gifts of the Spirit. 
and I want to go someplace where I can do that. Would you object? And see if you can't work it out, okay? Maybe he'll get tired of sitting in the pew by himself. Yeah, that's right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> all right. Here's David from Lynchburg, Virginia. Yeah, this is David. Pat, how many books have you had published? Thank you. I think I've had about 22. The one that's out here right now is either 22 or 23. Okay. But uh, I, I, yeah, I've got a lot of them out there. And, but, you know, the Bible talks about it, you bearing fruit in old age. And somehow he just gave me an anointing of the Spirit. I've, I've turned out three books recently. Uh, the Ten Laws of Success is a, a, re, is a redoing of the Secret Kingdom. Uh, the new one on I Walk with the Living God is, is a powerful autobiography of the miracles that God has done. And then the one on the Holy Spirit that's still yet to go, but then I've had many other books, The New World Order and other than that, uh, many books that I have written and they've- And one novel. Huh? And one, one novel. One, exactly. I, I had a novel called The End of the Age, my, my one uh, attempted fiction. And it, it, I so, loved it. That it was sold so about 150,000 copies, so it went pretty well. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks for that. Well, next on the line is Paula from Philadelphia. My question is, when you die, do you go straight to heaven, or are you sleep in a grave until Jesus Christ returns? Uh, there are a lot of people that talk about soul sleep. But you remember on the, the cross, uh, Jesus was talking about the thief, and he said, Lord, remember me when you come into the, your kingdom. And he says, this day you will be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. And Paul said, I'm a straight betwixt two whether to remain in the flesh, which is needful for you, or to depart and be with the Lord, which is far better. So my feeling is when we leave here, uh, our spirit, not our body, but our spirit goes to be with the Lord. And uh, I don't believe in soul sleep. I don't think the Bible teaches that. All right. That's that's uh, refreshing and assuring, you know, because nobody wants to be like just waiting. Well, a lot of people teach that. I mean, you go to the grave and you're just sitting there waiting and they talk about purgatory. The Bible says nothing about any purgatory where you have to go and be processed. What you do in this life is going to determine what happens in the next life, and that's it. This day you will be with me in paradise. This day. This will the, today. That's and Paul right. said, I'm a straight betwixt two, whether to depart and be with the Lord or remain in the flesh, which is needful for you, but it's only a two. Either stay here and help you or be with the Lord. Okay. Amen. I love it. All right, one more before we go to the break. This is Lily from Tampa, Florida. I agree with Pat when he says to buy triple A rated blue chip stocks that pay a dividend. However, I can't find a stockbroker that wants to do that. You have to have a few hundred thousand dollars before they even want to try and buy you the individual stocks. Please, I want to know where I can buy blue chip AAA stocks and I don't have to spend half a million dollars before a broker will give me the time of day. Thank you. Well, I, I think if you look at uh, the, the big brokerage house, uh, they welcome small accounts. A lot of them are soliciting small accounts. Uh, I, I think, uh, well, the, there, there are a number of them out there that, that uh, you know, they, they, they solicit applications on the air. You, you don't need to have hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, if you want to get special treatment, that, that they're looking for big accounts. But uh, mm. uh, I, I think uh, there, there are a number of uh, accounts that welcome you. And you could open a brokerage account with, with you know, $1,000 or $100 if you want to. Look around, uh, you know, at various uh, brokers. They're discount brokers. Schwab used to take a whole bunch of them, and mm -hmm. and uh, it's available. Absolutely, you don't have to have a lot of money to to open a a brokerage account. Just a small amount, and you can you can buy stock through that. All right. All right. Good stuff. Still ahead, we've got more of your voicemail questions. Round three of the special edition of your questions and honest answers from Pat. That's coming up. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We begin our final round of your questions, honest answers, and we start this question from Jean from Richland, Wisconsin. I have been married for 25 years. I left my husband after 21 years. We're not divorced. He's been very abusive. No sex, no financial help. 
I've been abused physically, mentally, and emotionally. Do I have the right to divorce him? Um, I, I use the term construction desertion. The Apostle Paul gave this permission. He said, if the unbeliever is pleased to depart, let him depart. The brother or sister is not bound in a case like that. But I think that such a thing is constructive desertion. A man who is adulterous, that, that, that's the key right there. If he's committing adultery, Jesus gave that as an exception uh, to, to, because your, your marriage is already broken. But in terms of physical, emotional abuse, mm. that to me is constructive diver, uh, desertion. And I think that you're free, and you can free to leave, and you're free to divorce, and you're free to get remarried. That's my feeling, and I, I believe uh, it would be backed up by what the Bible has to say. Absolutely. Thanks, Pat. Right. Our next caller comes to us from New York City. Here's Jay. I'd like to know, how can you say that Trump is going to beat Biden when Biden is 14 points ahead? Could you please assure me why you think Biden is going to lose to Donald Trump? Oh, why do I think so? Because I just, I just know in my heart what's going on. But um, uh, I think these polls, we had a deal uh, that we were talking about on, on our program, and, and David Brody brought it out, that the polls have a bias toward Democrats. In other words, they're going to poll the country, and they presume that 10% more people are Democratic than Republican, and therefore, when they take a sampling, automatically it's slanted. Um, I, I think these polls don't show enthusiasm. They don't show a lot of things. And let's face it, the, there was quite a few weeks left before the election. But uh, uh, I think especially the media likes to bring these polls out to diminish Donald Trump's strength. Uh, and they don't show enthusiasm. They, they, they don't show the level of support that he has. But um, we'll see. I mean, you know, it's uh, the, the only poll that matters is on Election Day. That's the poll that counts up to that point. But going into the Electoral College, uh, we'll see what happens. But I, I think Trump's running on a platform of law and order. And the more riots there are in Portland, the more riots there are in Seattle, the more riots there are in Chicago and uh, in uh, New York and other cities. Uh, the more of that people are going to say, well, we're going to vote for law and order. And that hasn't been reflected yet in these polls. All right. All right. Here's a question from Catherine. She's from Foley, Alabama. Hi, Pat. I wanted to know if you knew a good probiotic, anything that would help the digestive system would be appreciated. Thank you so much. And God bless you. Well, what could uh, help the digestive system? I think don't load it up with sweets and things like that and heavy meat. Uh, that, that's the big thing. But uh, we've been talking about metabolic syndrome, and we have got a thing on the build a better gut. And, you know, you have these little critters down in your stomach that actually it's like a, a, a second brain. Uh, it controls a great many of the functions of your body and your brain. And we talk about probiotics and prebiotics. And, you know, for example, uh, there are things that kill them. If you take an antibiotic, it'll kill your gut flora. And when you have your gut flora isn't healthy, then you have all kinds of, of diseases that take over your body. And if your gut flora is healthy and, and, and you, don't, you don't eat a lot of sweets, you don't let a a lot of, um, of red meat and things like that, and you don't eat a lot of processed food and trans fats. If you stay away from that stuff, especially, you know, uh, all, all the white flour and things like that, you, you'll be much more healthy, and, and uh, that'll help whatever you got. Okay? All right. Good stuff. Here's a question from Julie. She's from Seattle, Washington. Hello, Pat. I have tried to minister and share my faith in Christ Jesus to my neighbor. Sadly, he continues his evil ways, stealing, lying, and taking advantage of people. He never seems to get caught. Does Satan have the power to protect evildoers? Thank you. Uh, there's no question Satan is looking after his people. <laughs> and <laughs> what does the Bible say? If you're going to despoil a strong man, you've got to buy the strong man first. And uh, I, I believe the question of you've got a neighbor who you think is under the influence of Satan, 
I think you bind the strong man. You, 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 you pray that in the name of Jesus, I bind you, Satan, and the forces of evil. And you say it specifically, and you mean it in the name of Jesus. Mm. And, you know, then you take the protection away. And isn't that what, before you despoil his house, you first bind the strong man. And if he's in possession of his goods, he's not going to turn them loose, okay? All right. That's great. All right. Here's Andrea from Brentwood, New York. She's on the line. I'm calling to ask the question about the Old Testament. Why were there such strict restrictions on mixing textures like wool and linen and all that kind of a thing? What was the importance of that? You know, I, I believe that somehow down the line, uh, the Lord realized what was going to happen with genetic altering. And we have things in our society now that is pretty frightening. And they're talking about cloning. They're even talking about uh, cloning. Uh, they, we, we've cloned sheep. We've cloned horses. And there's a possibility that uh, they would even try to, to put uh, uh, monkey cells along with humans and see if they couldn't bring out a, a, a mixed creature. Uh, the Old Testament, they couldn't do any of that stuff, but it was forbidden. And I, I think God knew down the line that human beings would get into that position where they could bring forth some really frightening things. It hasn't been accomplished totally, but the idea of, of cloning a human being is, has been discussed by scientists in places like China and so forth. So mis mis mixing fabrics was like a slippery slope towards things like so, that. Exactly. I mean, you, you, you fix you wool and, and so forth. Uh, that that's for starters, but I think that why is it in there? I mean, I, I didn't write the Bible, and I didn't give those things. So why God did it? I'm I'm giving you a, a, a guess. It's an educated guess, but I think down the road God knew what human beings were capable of, and He didn't want them to do it. All right. All right. Here's Desiree from Phoenix, Arizona. Pat, happy belated 90th birthday. Could you please help me better understand, with God there is no time, he knows us before we were born, and also gives us free will, then doesn't he know who will be saved and not before they die? Uh, you know, the Bible is, of course, he knows everything. He sees from the end from the beginning, and, uh, you know, he spoke to Jeremiah, he said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and I called you to be a prophet to the nations. Uh, God knows these things, but He doesn't take away our free will. And uh, He lets us live the life we were going to live. And we are free at any time at all to receive Him. But He doesn't want just a bunch of robots that are, uh, will, will live for Him just because of, of fear and, and so forth. So He's given us free will, and that's part of you being a human being. We, you and I have free will, and we were made in the image of Almighty God. Well, listen, thank you so much. That's all the time we've got. We appreciate all those wonderful questions, and we'll leave you with these words from Colossians. Whatever you do in word or do, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.